Okay, again, um, here, here was my, my photo from last class. And again, one of the problems was it was really dark over here. Okay. And then I tried to show you how to bring it into Photoshop to try and, and convert this into more of a black and white image. Because when you're trying to um, take a drawing and convert it into a vector, this is my whole goal here is to convert this into objects that we have that we can use in other programs. Uh, you know, you want to try and have something that's really um, contrasty, if that's a word, contrast. So, uh, and so what did you send me? This one? Yeah. Okay, so if I open this up in Photoshop, it'll, she has all the icons, it looks like. Okay, so, but at least it looks a little bit more flat. So probably inside of Photoshop, uh, one of the ones I would probably do most would be to uh, use levels. That's my favorite one, is levels. Um, but I'm sure there's many other tools you can use, but um, levels is, a, is, is in Photoshop gives you the ability to um, um, see the what's called the histogram is the term. So if I go under image adjustment levels right here, you'll see there's this, this kind of chart right here, okay? And the chart is referred to as a histogram and it comes from, you know, scientific information. It comes from scientific information. And that's, it's basically like a chart. And what is the chart showing you? You have white over here. You have black over here, and you have grays in the middle. And the middle one here is 128, and this is 255, and this is zero. And then it says one, but it's really 128 halfway between here and here. And so this is where middle gray is in your image. This is where white is. This is where black is. So, um, you know, I use this one pretty much on every photo I ever take, because most digital cameras don't have a, uh, uh, the the range. For some reason, the whites are never white white enough, and the blacks are never black enough. So, you know, I tend to use this to adjust those things. Uh, but in this case, I can use it also to add contrast to them. How you can do that is you'll notice you have eyedroppers over here in this tool. You have a, this is white, and this is black, and you can use the eyedropper to to sort of force it to, to make something black or force something to make something white. So here's how I would use it. I choose the eyedropper and I go and I click on what I want to be white and it makes it white. I choose the eyedropper that I want to make black and I click on what I want black and it makes it black. Well, but of course it didn't work. Why was this? Why did not this not work? Well, it was green. Okay. The downfall of this is that it sucked up the color information that was in there and it skewed the colors. So that did not work. If this was gray, it probably would have worked a lot better. It was because there was color information in there. So keep it. Now it did make it black. It did kind of work, but it kind of messed it up a little bit. And that would be hard. So I'm not going to use that. Tool. I'm just pointing out you might be able to use that. I'm going to reset. There is an option to reset this, isn't there? Option when I reset. No. Mm, I thought there was a reset. There's an auto. Want to try that? That didn't do anything. Hey, but it looked like a reset. How about this? We start with white. Let's do make one white. There we go. Then we compress. How do we compress? We take this black right here and we we increase it like that. Ah. Eh. That's pretty good. I'm going to increase it just a little bit and then try and get rid of some of that. There we go. Okay, now it's not black because there's no color information. There's color information in there. You notice down here, look at how this is turning out right here. See how this is turning out? That's where drawing with black would have been a little bit better. The colors would mess this up a little bit. So let's get rid of the color information. If you remember to get rid of the color information is under image, mode, grayscale. Or another way to get rid of the color information as well is to go under image adjustment, hue and saturation. The term hue, of course, is color. Saturation means the amount of color. So if we, another way, oh, and there's also black and white right there. See that? Okay. So let's do the hue and saturation. I'm going to try that one first. And one way to get, you know, black or gray is to take the saturation all the way down to nothing. Do you see that? So there's no color. Once you go saturation down to nothing, you'll see now it's gray and so on. So 
That's one way of going about it. How about another way? Under image adjustment, let's try black and white. There we go. And so then, um, whoosh, I don't even know how to use this tool. Why, how do you, why, why is it black? I thought it would be black and white. There. Maximum black, maximum white, maximum black. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess that's good enough. I don't know. That's one way, I guess. No, I know. I'm just wondering, you know, I guess we get rid of green. Yeah, I haven't really used this. Well, there we go. Get rid of oh, That looks pretty gray. Okay, that's not too bad. I don't know. I tried black and white and adjusting with some of those. Let me real quick go in back into levels, and I'm going to crank up the white again. Look at how I went back into levels. I'm going to click on maybe some grays. There we go. We're starting to get some contrast. There. Look at the contrast there. Woo! Okay, how did I do that? I just was messing around, as you can see, again, with levels, choosing the white, and then trying to get rid of the color because there was color. Use either either using hue and saturation, or I tried this black and white, which I really I thought it would just make a black and white, but that that's one way of going about it. So again, what you want is something that looks like this that I can then convert into a vector. So the purpose of using Photoshop within this method was to try and get this to be more of a contrast, black to white, black to white. Because when you're trying to convert this into an object, you want it to be solid object, right? Solid. Okay, so let's move on and take this into Illustrator. So again, Illustrator is one way. You can make this in a vector inside of, of, of Photoshop. I don't want to do that because it will confuse you more. But the way to do it inside of Photoshop is to use the paths paths. So if you wanted to make vector inside of Photoshop, there is a way of doing it. It's under paths. I do have a video on that already and I can link that video up for you. Okay, to bring this inside or any of these uh, uh, objects into Illustrator, I usually copy and paste. How do I copy and paste from Photoshop to Illustrator? I use a selection tool. These are a selection tool. How Photoshop works is you have selection tools that select the area that you want to use. So in this case, I'm going to use the rectangle selection tool or the rectangle marquee right here. And I usually start in the upper left corner, drag to lower right corner. How do I start in the upper left corner? Is by holding my left mouse down. See how my cursor's here? Again, the rectangle marquee here. And I'm going to click and drag over top of my icon idea right there. And I'm going to release my mouse. Notice how the, and sometimes they refer to this as a marching ants. If you don't, haven't used and tried a Photoshop tutorial book, there's a lot of tutorial books on Photoshop. Um, get used to them. You should go and buy a book and do every tutorial in the book. But in this case, sometimes in the tutorials, they call these marching ants. Got to love the term marching ants. Okay, I'm going to copy. Of course, to copy, you can use the menus like we were doing already, which is under edit copy. If you can't remember command keys, again, this command is called command C. I'm going to go over to Illustrator. How do I jump to Illustrator? Is by going under the AI down here in my dock. In this case, just like I was been demonstrating in Illustrator, just like last class as well, I'm going to start with a new file. Um, it doesn't matter size at this point. We will adjust the size in a little bit. But in this case, uh, I want to make sure that it is color is in RGB. So if you twirl down the triangle here, you'll notice it says RGB here. That's good. I want RGB. I'm doing things for the screen. And I'm going to hit Create. Makes me a can uh, an artboard. This is called an artboard. Again, if you want to move your artboard around inside of Illustrator, I hold down the space bar. And then the left mouse. Space bar, left mouse. Space bar with one hand. Do you, you know when I'm using these tools and using Illustrator, Photoshop, and so on? I'm always using two hands. One hand for the keyboard. Space bar gives you a hand. Left mouse gives you a hand. See how it grabs? See how it grabs? And you can drag around. See that? In fact, that was in the original Illustrator. That technique I'm showing you. Illustrator 88. Space bar, hand, grab, and move around. I was doing that, you know, 1988.
It's been around for a long time. Get used to it. Okay, to put my artwork in here, I'm going to hit, of course, paste. If you don't remember keyboard commands to paste, it's under edit, paste, right there, or command V, as in vector, V, as in value, I don't know, V. And it puts my artwork in there. If your artwork's too big, like it's kind of big right now, you can shrink it down by putting your cursor along the edge, and you can scale it down. If you're scaling something, again, scaling is something you do a lot. Again, when you have something selected, you, it has little dots around the edge. When you're scaling, it could get out of skew like this. If you don't want to skew it, you'll hold the shift key down, and it keeps it in proportion. Shift will keep it in proportion. And there it is. Okay, now I'm going to convert this into a vector. To convert this into a vector inside of Illustrator, again, is the tool is called Image Trace. Image Trace is located under Window. So all these tools that we talk about, like in Illustrator and sometimes in Photoshop, are underneath here. And you'll notice there's a whole list. These are all pop-up menus that do a whole bunch of things. In this case, you know, I don't need it to do too much right now. What I'm looking for is the image trace option. So if I scroll on down, I'm going to scroll on down, scroll on down, you'll notice there's one called image trace. Again, it's under window. This is the one that you use to convert into a vector. They introduced the image trace probably, I would say, 99, 2000. I don't think there was, there was a tool called the image trace tool for a while. In, but then they converted it into this pop-up menu. I think it was Illustrator CS3. Or no. I don't remember. I do remember when they started it. So again, I'm going to select my object. You'll notice in the Image Trace pop-up menu, you'll see that it has some options. And what I want here is mode. It's called black and white right here. See where it says black and white? Because I want to convert it to just objects okay, that are just plain. So I'm going to leave the black and white, and then I think I, I talked about last class about how you can get rid of the white area if you don't want this to be an object. Sometimes you might want this to be an object and this be a different object. Don't turn ignore white off. The white area will be an object, and the black will be a ob different object. But if you don't want the white at all and you just want this object right here, you can do what's called ignore white right here, and it will get rid of the white area, and it will just leave you with shapes that are what you see there, your hockey stick or your hockey puck. Again, image trace, black and white. And then there's a threshold. There it is at 128. We really don't have to deal with this too much. The reason why threshold is not going to work is because we kind of did that inside of Photoshop, right? Remember, we made it very contrasty. If you didn't do that in Photoshop, you could do it here as well to make it really more contrasty. Again, ignore white is under the advanced option right here. See the pop-up menu right here? Advanced, ignore white. And when you're done, you hit trace, and it converts it into an object. And the reason why you want to have this an object is so that you can manipulate it a lot easier in other programs. You can scale it, and you're not dealing with pixels. You know, the reason why we're doing this is that you want to have an object that you can do things with without having to re-pixelate. You know, the problem with pixels in bitmaps is that you have these squares in there. And so as you make them bigger and make them smaller, the computer has to, it, the term is called interpolate. And what that means is it has to remake the pixels. And so as you scale things it, with dots in it, it gets fuzzier, uglier. It doesn't really work well. So, you know, we want to use vectors as much as we can often. Objects. Yes? How do I undo everything? To undo things are under edit. Undo image trace is right there. And it'll go back. And then you can even go back in time multiple steps by going here. Just like in Photoshop, you can go back multiple steps. The second one, after you do the first one, second one, you do multiple steps. And then if you want to go back in time even further, of course, there is a history option. I don't know. Do they have history? In, I don't think they have history. In, yeah, there's usually. So again, there's a trace option there. It converts it into a vector. Now, if you want to manipulate this vector and adjust it, you have to do that underneath the uh, object expand. 
expand is the ability to convert it and so that you can manipulate it or change it. Right now it's kind of grouped together. So when we're working in Illustrator or an ob in fact, we're going to be grouping things together. When we're making menus and things like that, we're going to be grouping things. So, you know, as you're working with multiple objects on the screen, they're grouped together. In this case, once you trace something, this is kind of grouped together. I want to ungroup it. One way to ungroup it is to use this option called expand right here. It'll take all the little objects that are in there and make them individual. To do that, you go underneath object expand and say OK. It makes them into individual objects. Your white might still be there. You can see there's some kind of white here or something. I don't know what this is. I'm going to delete that. Oh, I don't want to delete that like that. Don't do that. Use the white selection tool, this one, the one that's called the direct selection tool. That will allow you to select individual objects so that you can change them. Uh, again, I'm going to click on this white area and hit delete. There we go. So it got rid of this white. I don't know why. When I say ignore white, I thought it would go away. It didn't really go away. What this white arrow is used for is, and I'm going to zoom in. Remember, it's Command plus, Command minus, Command plus, Command minus, Command plus, Command minus, Command plus. Uh, this arrow right here, this one right here, allows you to manipulate individual points. As you click along an object, you can see you can make them into individual objects right there. If your object is really rough and you want to smooth it out, there is actually a smooth feature inside of Illustrator. Because if we look at this, since we were drawing this with a, um, with the marker over here, the marker was not very smooth. You'll see, look, see how it's kind of bumpy here. I kind of like the bumpiness, but that's okay. If you want to smooth this out or do things, some sometimes you can actually smooth it by using a tool called the Smooth Tool. To smooth it, I'm going to select the objects that are on the screen, and the Smooth Tool is under Object, Path, Simplify. It's not smooth, I'm sorry. It's called Simplify couldn't remember all my tools there. What that does is it kind of removes some objects. It might make your object more simple so that if it's kind of rough and you have rough edges, um, the simplify here will also smooth it out. And you can hit a preview so you can see what it does. See how many, there's a whole bunch of points in here. But if I hit preview right here just to see what it'll do, it turns it into a lot less points. Do you see that? You can see the points changing. And then there's a there's a, a curve option that gives you more or less points. Of course, the higher here gives you more detail, less. Again, more or less. And notice it's going to save you a lot of memory because the simplify, you know, this has 467 points in the first one. And then when I use the simplify, it's going to be less 135 points. What has it done is it kind of smoothed it out, right? There was a lot of little jaggy areas along there. So then the simplify will allow you to remove some of those and make it smoother. So you might want to consider that if you're doing, again, a drawing to the computer, to a vector, this would save you and smooth things out. Um, so again, that was underneath. Where was the simplify? Object, path, simplify. That really helps to simplify your object. Okay, let's talk about color. Now, I'm not going to color this. I'm not going to color this at all. One of the things to keep in mind is that you can color your objects if they're black and white. Like if I bring an object in, let's say I wanted to use this vector in, in CSS. Right? I'm making a website, and I want to have a hockey icon on my screen. Right? A hockey, this little icon on my hockey. I'm making a website for the San Jose Sharks, and I want to have an icon next to you know, shooting the puck icon next to whatever the link it is, shooting the puck. I would make that black and white, and when I save it and I program it, I can program it a different color in the CSS programming. So you can adjust colors of things that are like that inside of CSS. Same with uh, uh, um, Xcode can do the same thing. You can change the color. We did that in class, I believe. Yes. So um, you can change color. So what I'm trying to say is I'm going to say that it's black and white, and my programming can change the color later. Okay? So in web design, 
You can change it in CSS, cascading style sheets, and hex code. We can do it through the programming and script. So to save this as a black and white. Now the advantage of this is a vector and it can scale. So in, if I save this and I programmed it on my website using CSS, uh, I can scale it using CSS as well. So the advantage of a vector too is you don't really need to think about size too much because um, you can change the size in the programming. But let's look at size anyways, just so that we can have it square. The most important thing is the dimensions is very important. Um, they're common dimensions uh, for, for um, app design as well as even web design. It would be common square sizes is 5, 12, 5, 5, 12, 128 by 128, 64 by 64, or what else? 16 by 16 as well. 16 by 16 is a common icon. That is an app icon. So if you look at the, this, 16 by 16, 16 by 16, or, oh, we don't, need, I forgot, 32 by 32 and 24 by 24. These are all common sizes. This is a typical icon size, like that. So how do I do that in this program? Well, we use the artboard. This is the artboard. And so we can change the artboard size to any size we want. We can make new artboards. I can make a whole bunch of artboards and scale this down to fit in there. If you want, I can use the artboard tool is this one right here. See the artboard tool right there? And so it's called the artboard tool right there. If I double click on it, it's going to ask me do I want a new artboard? Yeah, I want a new artboard. Uh, maybe it's going to be, what did I just say? Um, let's use the 512 by 512. And so this is going to be my 512. I'm just going to call it 512 so I know what it is. And then down here where it says inches, you can actually type in. You can change it. And you'll see common sizes here as well, right? Common sizes here. But um, you can also type it in here, and I know it says inches here, but you can actually type in pixels. So when those dimensions I have on the screen are actually in pixels, I'm sorry I didn't give you context. They're not inches, they're pixels. So think about it. If I wanted this to be 512 by 512 pixels, I can go here. Again, this is the artboard tool. How I got to this screen is I double-clicked on the artboard tool. I double-clicked on it, and I can type in 512 px you can type px for pixel uh-oh uh, it converted into inches because it, it it's 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 just doing that you would have to change the uh, thing but whatever it is going to be five five twelve px i know it's converting it in inches don't worry about that you could change that in the um in the in the ruler settings but it is correct and then if i hit okay it's going to give me the right size there it is. And I can then take my artwork. Again, I'm using the selection tool here. And I can move it around inside there if I want. If I want. And this is going to be very important um, how to get your artwork to fit into the right proportions. In fact, when we get to uh, using Sketch or saving files, what's going to be really important is the pixels that, if you're going to convert this into a, back into pixels, how it converts it in pixels is how the edges are. Okay, here's one. Yes? It could be transparent or it could be white depending upon what you want. So it's, it's up to you. It could be transparent so you see through. Right now it's transparent. How did you change it? I either put a rectangle back there behind it because remember, this is a vector, so this is an object, right? So I can make another rectangle object and put it behind me. The reason why you, um, you might want to leave it blank is so that you can, you can program a different color behind it, too, as well. There's a background BG color in CSS. Anybody know there's CSS? There's a way you can program color behind there in programming. So I might leave it transparent. But if I wanted color back there, I would simply draw a rectangle the size of my object here 
Then I'd give it a color. This is color in Illustrator here. And then, uh-oh, it's not color here. Remember color mode? Last class I had to tell you how it, it, this is in black and white because of the way we converted it. So I need to convert this into a color object by using the color pop-up menu. I don't know how to explain it any more than that. There's a color pop-up menu to convert it into color. And then since this is objects, and this object is over top of my hockey puck, or my hockey stick, I need to move it behind it. So there's a way to rearrange objects, and that's under Object, Arrange, and I would send it to the back right here. So get used to this arrange. All, all programs are going to have this where you bring things forward and backward, forward and backward, because if you think about it, uh-oh, look at the middle. I didn't leave the white in there, though, did I? Okay, but, um, you know, when we get to making things on the screen, you have multiple objects and you have to move things forward and backward. There's a range. It's called a range here in Illustrator. And uh, then it's called in Sketch and Photoshop. Layers go up and down as well. But that's how you can put color back there. Okay, let's save it. I'm running out of time here. It's already 10 10. Uh, if you want to make another artboard, you can come over here where the artboard is. See the artboard right here. And let's say I want to make an example that's going to be 320, 32 by 32, which is a common size for an icon as well. 32 by 32. I can make this right here, this artboard. I can draw a new artboard tool by clicking. So I choose the artboard tool and I click on the screen twice. No, that didn't work. How do I bring up the options? This was for this one. Maybe, let me see. No, that's not going to work. Okay, how about we just draw one? And then, no, I can't draw another artboard. There we go. Draw an artboard. Okay. Again, I was using the artboard tool right there. Draw an artboard, and then once I'm done drawing it, you'll notice you have the dimensions either up here for width and height. Right here, width and height. Or again, remember we double clicked on the artboard here. So either up here or double click here. You can change it. Again, I wanted what? 32px and then 32px. And it gives me a 32 by 32 pixel square. Then I can take all my artwork that I have here and I can duplicate it. Again, I'm using the um, selection tool here. So again, I have one artboard that's 32 by 32. This one's 512 by 512. I'm going to use the selection tool, and I'm going to select all my artwork by holding the left mouse down and dragging over top of all the artwork. And I'm going to duplicate this. To duplicate anything, to duplicate anything, is always the option key on the keyboard. Even in even in the operating system, right? It's the option key on the keyboard. And of course, that Alt is option, Alt is on Windows, Options on Mac. Anything, is, that's always the duplicate tool, that one. Even in the OS, watch this, watch this, watch this. Oh, no, I didn't want that. Watch this. Here's my icon, here's an icon, it's on the desktop, right? I wanna duplicate that. I hold down the option key, click and drag, makes me a second one. Option, click and drag, makes me a third one. Option, click and drag, makes me a fourth one. The option key or alt key on the keyboard will duplicate anything, even in the OS, and all the, all the programs do the same thing. All the programs do the same thing. So back inside of Illustrator, I want to duplicate this artwork and squeeze it in there. Duplicate this and squeeze it in there. How do I do that? I hold the, again, I'm using the move tool right here, move tool. I'm going to hold down the option key and I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to scale it down. Remember the shift key scales in proportion. Squeeze it in there. Zoom in there. Squeeze it in there. Squeeze it in there. Squeeze it in there. and squeeze it in there. So now I have a 32 by 32 pixel artboard, right? And then I have another artboard that's 512 by 512. 
because sometimes you need to show people, hey, this is what it's going to look like. Because you want your icon to be able to be visible in a small area too, right? So looking at it like that is good as well. So again, if you look, uh oh, I want spotlight. No, escape. You ever get anything crazy like that? Hit escape. So we have two artboards with two icons. Okay, let's save it. Um, again, one way to save this is you have three formats. I think we talked about them first day of class, the second day of class, right? You have your PNG, which is a great format because the transparent area would stay transparent. You have JPEG, which is a great format, but of course it doesn't do very good for um, doesn't have a transparent area. Then for app design or Xcode, I would use if I'm going to keep it vector so I can scale it in Xcode. These are all bitmap, right? These are all dots. These are all megapixels. So if I save this as a PNG right now, it would convert it into dots. If I save it as JPEG, it would convert it into dots. So if I'm going to keep it as just objects. Boxes on the outside. You saw the dots around the outside. When I say objects, it's just dots around the outside. I would use the PDF, portable document file, because Adobe, right? It's probably an open PDF before. I can bring the PDF into Xcode and program it in my app. So it'll stay vector. If I was going to put it on my website and I wanted it to be vector, what format would I use? SVG. So if I was doing web design and I want to put it on my website as a vector, I would use a format called SVG, which stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. So SVG stands for Scalable, which means it doesn't have to move, it's bigger or smaller. And vector, remember it's a vector with dots, graphic. SVG came out in 1997 been widely used until more recently because the browser didn't really interpret it. You had to have a plug-in in your browser to interpret an SVG back in the old days. But today it's widely used and, you, and the browser will interpret and when it finds an SVG it will interpret it pretty quickly. So I guess this, for a this would be for a website, yes. Okay, this is a version of XML, of the format of XML. You can put a PNG as a, a pixel. It'd be like a photo when you put a photo on a website, right? This would be putting a photo on a website. But if I wanted to put a graphic, an object, I could use this format and it'll stay vector like that. It'll stay with mathematical equations. So I can make it really big on my website, look great. Make it really small on my website, look great. If I take this and I scale it really big on my website, it's gonna be blurry dots, right? Right, so you know this is a really good format to put on your website. How do I program this on my website? I do it like a photo. You can use the uh, image or object or um, what am I trying to embed the embed code. Are you guys haven't taken a web development? It's okay. It's an important concept. Just like you would program a, a PNG, you would program SVG. And yeah, it's just, just like a file. It's on your thing, SVG. Uh huh. It's asking you what 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 version of SVG do you want? Uh, I usually use the default one, but whatever the default one is, is I go straight usually to don't change any of your options. Just hit OK. So yeah, we can look at all these formats. I'm running out of time though. Because we got to get to your, your your team building, whatever that means. Okay, hurry up. Here we go. Let's save. So the first thing Illustrator is going to ask me is which artboard do you want to export? Because remember, I have two artboards, right? Okay. So before I even do anything, notice it says untitled right here. See how it says untitled? That means I haven't even saved it as an Illustrator file yet. So I'm going to go under File, Save As, and let's give it a name. This is my hockey icon. Save that. Save that. Next, 
if I want to save it as, what, what do I have first up there? PNG? Right? Okay. PNG is going to be under File, Export. Export for Screens. And it's going to ask me, which artboard do you want? Notice how it has two artboards up there. If I had three or four, it would ask me all. If I only want one of them, let's say I, I don't want this one, I can deselect it. See the little checkbox? I don't need both of them. I just want one of them. See that? Our thing you'll notice over here is it's asking me for the different formats. Um, this is for app design. Remember, I think the first or second end class I talked about how icons are different sizes according to different screens on your phone, right? Old phone. Look, I have an iPhone 4 or 5. iPhone 6, 7. iPhone 8, X. In fact, I think it's 10 or whatever X is. Okay, so that's why they're here. Note this is iOS here. And yet Android has how many? Six. I don't know. Let's check. Android. There we go. Android, look at that. Hmm? SVG? Which one? It's coming point. I'm sorry. I'm not sure which yours. Oh, this is the way, it, the, the suffix, okay? That is uh, the extension. In order for you to program it inside of Xcode or the app design program, it has to be named a certain way. So what this is doing is it's telling you it has to be called at 2x, at 3x. So this is naming it properly automatically. So this is not a format. It's just how the name of the file will be, the name. So it's naming it a certain way, so the programming when I program this in Xcode or, or in the app design, you, you only program one, right? I put one on the screen. And, but when you import it into the program, you import all three. So that when it sees it at, let's say, iPhone 8, right? When you test the iPhone 8, it's going to put this one on the screen. If you're testing your app in an iPhone 5, it's going to put this one on the screen. And if you were to program it and test an iPhone X, it'll put that one on the screen. And how does it know how to put which one on the screen? It's by the name that you give it. So this is very important into the programming because it then the program will recognize which one to put on the, the, the appropriate phone. Same with Android. You will notice under Android, it has... I don't even want to know. But Android uses a different measurement, okay? And it's a little confusing, um, but that's what that is, okay? So uh, this is, P and you don't need to save it like this. What if you want to just export out a PNG to show to somebody? I don't, I don't need all this stuff here. I'm going to hit cancel. If I want to just, I'm going to select an artboard. I'm going to select this one right here. Select it using the selection tool. Then I'm going to go under File, Export Again. Or you can say Export Selection. See that? Export Selection. So that way it doesn't even see this one. Right? I'm only exporting this. And again, it doesn't. Then you don't. It doesn't have all these if you don't want them. It's just going to export one, one. I want to show my friend or sh send this to my thing. I don't need all three of them at this time. I'm going to export one. I got to say export. It's going to ask me to give it a name. I can put it on my desktop, and this is going to be um, whatever. It's going to put a name on there. No, what happened? I didn't. I say desktop. Yes. I don't have an OK. No, okay. What do I want? Where was I at? Oh, here it is. No. Why did it not work for me? Export asset. Oh, it's putting it here. You got to choose the location first, I guess. I don't know. 
Let me choose the location, desktop, export. Why does it keep coming up with this? Oh. Oh, I'll put it in here. There it is. And it called it Asset 2 because I haven't named the artboard, I guess. I don't know. But it did work. So um, how about a different way? That, that's a little confusing. Let's try uh, Export, Export As. Yeah, Export As. How about that? A, a better way. Don't even use Selection. <laughs> Unless you want something that's just selected. Export, Export As. There we go. How about Export As? And there it says hockey icon. There we go. Oh, and it's saving both of them. Let's try again. File, export, export as. And then just use artboards. And then you can choose what artboard you want. All, or range, maybe just one. Okay, so I don't know. There's ways to export PNG. To export as a JPEG, we go under file. Save as Illustrator. No JPEG under there, is there? No. Why is that? Well, we want to save it as file, export, export as, and then I think a JPEG is under there. There we go. You got all the formats under there. Even SVG, look. SVG, JPEG, and so on. Again, it was under export as. There's a JPEG. And then there's file. Okay, to save as a PDF, it's a little more complicated. To save as a PDF is under File, Save As. Under File, Save As, I'm going to change to PDF here. Adobe PDF right here. There's SVG in there as well. PDF. Then again, you can choose your artboard if you want. It's going to say All or Arrange. If I just want the first artboard, which is this one, I can choose range and just export this one right here and say save and leave all the default settings and hit save. If you want your PDF to be small, get rid of preserve illustrator editing and it'll make it tiny. It's probably good to do as if I'm done. The only only time I actually turn this off is when I'm done because you can't open it in illustrator and change it. There was a Preserve Illustrator editing capabilities right there. That'll make your PDF smaller, but again, it will do that. So I'm going to hit that. And so if you look at what I have, you'll see I have a whole bunch of icons. Here's a PDF. Here's a JPEG that actually has two. Two, yeah, see, I messed that up kind of. Here's the PNG, and then here's the Illustrator. The JPEG didn't seem to give me an artboard option. So here it is. And again, one of the problems with that is you'll see JPEG is pixelated, right? See all the pixels in there? See the fuzziness around the edges? But you can put that on a website just fine. PNG is fine, but it is also pixels. You zoom in, you can see the pixels. See the dots? PNG is still pixels as well. And then um, here's the PDF. And if I zoom in, <coughs> you don't see no pixels. Oops, I don't know what I clicked on here. I clicked on everything. So I can deselect. Let me start again. Again, here's the PNG or PDF. I'm sorry, the PDF. And if I zoom in, you'll notice you don't see any pixels. You can zoom in. Look at that. Zoom in. Well, that's as far as I can zoom. But look, no pixels. I can scale this as big and small as I want, and it's the most beautiful. Okay. Which one should I turn in for my, my assignment? I don't know. Whatever one you want. How about that? How about that? You can give me PNG, you can give me JPEG, any one. Whatever one you want. How about that? You choose. I can open any one. Okay, let's turn this off and move on because I'm running out of time.